What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Wes's Angling. Me and my dad are fishing a different fishery today. One that we actually haven't fished before. It's called Limbrick Fishery. It's near Chorley. So we've just pulled up. We're just waiting for them to open up and then we'll get to our pegs, get set up. Uh, I'm going to be fishing the method feeders today as usual. So uh, we'll see how we get on here. Loaded it up. Just gonna have a walk around and see what peg we fancy. We're fishing the bigger fish lake that they've got here. Looks like they've got a couple of canal lakes. And I think that's a donut lake by the looks of it. So it's like a nice place. Toilets. I think they've got a cafe as well. Like I said, never fished here before, so it's always exciting when you come to fish a new fishery. I need to start going to the gym more. Knackered already. We walked a few feet. Oh. Absolutely miserable day today. But that probably means the fishery is going to be quiet. Which is a bonus. Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at these little islands. They'll be great to method feed a fish to. Not a massive fishery, but really looks really well kept. I think my dad's on his way down now. Got his barrel loaded up. I definitely think, looking at this, it'll be good fishing to one of these little islands. Very snaggy. So, I'm gonna get set up, get all my stuff under the brolly out of the rain. Here he is now. What do you think, Dad? Fish to one of these little islands? Yeah. Yeah? Which one? I think that's probably got more choice, hasn't it? We're going either side of this tree here. So it gives access to suit two swims. My dad's got access to that far island. And there's no other pegs around this corner either, which is brilliant. You can fish to over there, can't you? That yeah, far that margin. Hey, well, what, what rod are you using? A 12 foot? Yeah. You'd be better there. I'm only using them short rods. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm only using a 10 foot rod, so I can just, I can just flick it out. So I've got a bit of uh, ground bait here and bread flake pre-mixed that I've got in the freezer so we'll start off on that. My dad's bought some ground bait that we can use when that's done with. I'm just trying to get set up before it hammers it down again. That's brilliant and it's hidden as well. It's a good idea. But <laughs> that'll make these two pegs probably best. Because they'll hone in on that aerator. So it's right under there. Look. Try and uh, show you where that's falling in. So, uh, right in the middle. So there'll be fish all around here. Attracted to that aerator for the oxygen. Put some particles in to start off the swim. So we'll go probably there and out towards the end of that island Just, uh, just tied my brolly to this tree here, so it's not going anywhere. It's fairly windy. Right. Last but not least. Wafters. 
and what else should we get? Attractants, molds. I've already got a rod set up. The old Shimano Speedmasters, and I've just got a banjo feeder on 45 gram. So I'll get that set up in a minute and we'll get fishing. We're good to go there. Hook links, I'm just using size 12 wide gate feeder hook, these that I pre tied last night four inch, three or four inch, but yeah, so I'm going to be fishing down here, just under this tree, and just out to that mini island there. Alright, I think we're up and running there. Check the rod, check the tip. It's a one and a half ounce tip, I think, this one. Yeah. It's okay, nothing's tangled. Is it straight? Yeah, we're in line there. Drag probably needs to go up a touch. So we're not getting snagged in that tree. So that's slipping up and down my rest. So I want to put this a little bit further forward, just in front of that eye. <coughs> like that. So that eye is going to stop it. And then I can move this to wherever I need it. If I'm fishing across there, I can move it round or I can move the chair around. I think we'll try under here next to the aerator first. Put a hook link on. It's a big swell. Let's go with that one. Start with an eight mil. Pink wafter. And hook our hook link on. There we go. So that's nice and secure. Not strong. It's quite windy today, so I might do a voiceover when I'm editing. Double load it for the first cast. So this is just a mix of ground bait and bread feed. Under this so we don't get wet.
we're fishing. So we're all set up and fishing. Hopefully we catch something for you. That's behind me here. Nice little close pegs. There's fish, um, fish topping everywhere. And the big swells as well, so it's definitely carp. Is there any barbel in here, Dad? Have we got barbel? Always interesting when you're fishing a new fishery, obviously you never know what's going to be in here. We've not had any indications on the tip yet, it's been in about two or three minutes. We've got little pods if you wanted to stay over as well. And it's Limbrick Fishery where we're fishing. Really coming down now. I'm glad I've tied me uh, broly to the tree. Well, I do want GoPros are waterproof. Look at this topping on the surface. Or maybe this is more like the specimen lake and they don't catch as much. You don't know? Yeah. So like I was like I was saying to you before, this is this potentially the specimen lake and um, and there's two other smaller ones. You what dad? Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. It's not like just a round lake, is it? So it comes around here, little islands, there's a bay there. Which that peg there is pretty much the only peg where you can fish to all that bay. But over towards them far margins, I'm sure that'll be great. Squeeze it in a bit lighter. So we'll do that and double load it. Oh my God. I think I'm definitely going to have to do a voiceover. That wind's picking up. Yeah, of course. So, I've put it to the end of this side of the rest and I'm using this one and that'll get me a better angle towards that feeder. Should be able to see the indications there. Right close up to that island. Island. More like a bush. So just off the edge of this island. Getting a few indications on the tip and there's reeds twitching over there as well. So they're probably feeding on them uh, particles that I put in before. Don't think it'll be long before we get a fish. Conditions are perfect. I know it's raining and windy, but I tend to like that. It's mild as well. I'm in my winter suit today, obviously, because it's chucking it down, but I'm actually boiling. Fish topping all over, Dad. They're up, they're up in the water, though. They're up in the water. Like swirling on the surface. They'll, I'm sure they'll go down to feed in this weather, though. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll give it another couple of minutes and then I'll reel that in. I'll fish just a little bit further out from that island, I think. Got to keep moving around until you find where the fish are.
Hey up, he's in. Let's see if he lands it, but that might be 1-0. Pulling like it's a good and dead. You just have to take it easy so you don't get snagged up. Always let you have best peg. When my rod gets dragged in. It's like a nice uh, mirror. Definitely not far off eight pound that did. Really deep bodied. Well done. First fish. Lovely. Nice, con uh, nice mirror. So he was right, he was fishing right tight up to that far margin. Um, when you're fishing, when you are fishing the margins, usually the tighter up to the, the banking you are, the better. You know, you can be fishing six, seven inches out from the margin and sometimes they'll, they'll pick at the embankment. So it can be a good tactic, that. Well, there we go, one, one nil to my dad. Yeah, we're on. Not quite as big as yours, Dad. <laughs> but fish to fish. Mirror dad, like yours. Not, wasn't the, not as big, but he out. That's lucky, isn't it? You're up, Link, okay? The nice fish, these are they're like a bluish colour, aren't they? They swallowed it as well. Got me discords here. I'll get mine out. They seem to be wolfing them down. There we go. He had it. No, you got lucky there. Are you not clipped up? You might be better clipping up, eh? Always take a Discordia with you. Whew. Slap me right in the face. Okay, it's walking up now. <laughs> right, it's coming back. It's got too much energy. It's one each. No indications or anything, it just went off. I knew there'd be fish down there near that aerator. No, no, not at all. Took my wafter though. Yeah, that's an 8 mil. Might be a 10 mil actually. I'm just hiding that hook and hook link. So a fish will come up to that there for the beginners, start feeding off the top of that feeder and uh, eventually they'll find the hook bait and they won't even be thinking about the hook bait and they'll just take it. Obviously self hook themselves. 
Let's get it back down there near the aerator. The fish there moving this way on the top. Small carp. I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody that's already subscribed to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. Channel is growing really quickly, which is awesome. For those of you that haven't already and you do enjoy watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button down below. If anybody's got any requests on what they want me to do on the channel next, I am open to ideas, so feel free to comment with those. <laughs> it rip it right off the rest. <laughs> Always got to be watching your rods when you're method feeder fishing. That's the good thing about these that I've got little rubber grips and they just hold it. Let's give it that bit of extra tension if it gets ripped off. It's always a bit slow when you're fishing a different fishery. You don't know where all the good spots are and what have you. But it's a really nice place. Uh, weather's not as bad as we thought it was going to be, so just enjoy being outside. Doesn't matter if you're catching. Is it another mirror? I know that there's bait in both swims, so I'm not worried about leaving it that bit longer this time. But what I'm going to do is if I've not had anything in the next probably 15, 20 minutes, I might swap to a lighter hook link, like a seven pound hook link and a smaller hook and a smaller wafter. So like a six mil. And we'll just see if there's any bream in the swim or any smaller fish that are a bit put off by that eight mil wafter that I've gone at the minute. I'm fishing 10 pound main line and a nine pound hook link. The fish are go to 18 pound in here, so you need to fish fairly heavy. But I'd be pretty confident about landing something that size on a, a slightly lighter hook link. So that's probably what we'll do. We'll swap down to a smaller wafter, smaller hook and a smaller hook link. Another nice one. I think all the bigger ones are in your swim. This um, sky is getting very dark. Like it's going to absolutely hammer it down. Time check. So it's half eight now. We've been fishing for probably an hour or so. We've had three fish. Which isn't too bad considering we've never fished here before. Wind's picking up as well. A couple more minutes and then we'll go down to this uh, size 16 hook. And we'll put a, uh, a six mil wafter on it as well. There are the six mils. Just give us a better chance of catching uh, smaller fish. Oh, anything to take that, a crucian, roach, whatever, anything. Tempted to try back down here under this tree again as well. That's where I had that first fish. I think the bottom of this lake is quite silty. Um, so that's why I think the wafters are probably the best choice. I have got some maize as well uh, in the particle mix that we could put on the uh, on the uh, the band. Just starting to rain again. Oh bloody hell! He's in again. Trailing behind. 
in, in my defense the wind is blowing into that corner which will uh, <laughs> definitely help so I'm just swapping to this smaller wafter oh you're No, I, the only other place that I did really well on Yellow Wafter was uh, Stoltz Hall. Um, it just shows you, you know, don't be scared of trying different coloured wafters and stuff. I've just got most faith in the pink ones. But my dad's had a couple of fish now, on one on a chocolate orange and one on a yellow. But that looks like a nice fish. Another nice uh, mirror carp. Right, let's try this. Slightly smaller hook and wafter. I'm gonna mix some more ground bait in a second as well. Getting desperate now. Two fish down. Don't ever leave your rod as well like this. <laughs> Where are you fishing? What? To them reeds? That one was right in that little bay there. Oh. Right in it. Over here, just keep trying around. Just keep alternating. Yeah. It's a nice little bay that. Oh god. Wind's just blown me rod off in. It's made me feed a chair over to stick my brolly into the ground it was pulling the chair oh, looks solid enough that leg out a bit more there we go Let's see what position we're in there that's about right I can move that over and switch uh, feeder chair won't blow away again now just off them reeds. I'll do. And we'll work our way in from there. Every cast. See if we can find these fish. Okay. Well, we're in the reeds a little bit there, but does it matter? It's not interfering with the tip in any way. So we'll still get the indications. I've got my drag set fairly high in case a fish goes kite right around the island. We don't want that. I'll just get my rod tip down low. Tried it a couple of times. I'm just fishing to left of the island now. And um, I'll probably try down there next cast again. Loads of fish cruising around the top for some reason. It's not what you'd expect in uh, on a rainy day, but it's probably why they're not feeding on the bottom on this side. Give it another five minutes down there, and I'll try into the middle, see if it's a little bit deeper. Yeah. 
But they're, they're all up on the surface. I can see them here. I can see the carp. Isn't it? Oh, I was just about to reel that in. I've got a crucian. Yeah, and I'm stuck on a thorn bush. There we go. Oh, it's hard work when we feed a chair with that net. Really nice crucian as well, really gold. That's a look. Lovely fish that. Look at how gold they are. See it? Yeah, really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, six mil. I had in my head that I might get a crucian on that on the six mils. I think crucians tend to shoal together, so I'm gonna see if there's another one down there. It's just trying to get it under this branch. That's better. I was literally gonna reel that in any second as well. I was gonna reel that in any second as well. try over there next and I'll probably fish a bit further out from this orator next time as well where it's a little bit deeper I've had a couple of little tweaks on the tip probably crucian bites really finicky feeders um, so not enough to hook themselves they've obviously not taken the uh, the wafter completely in might just be nipping at it next cast i've just underarmed some ground bait in just to the right of that island but a little bit further out closer to the middle so i'll probably have a cast there next quite a slow day obviously we've never fished here before so don't know what the fishing's like but the complex is nice let's go a bit deeper Try there. Put it on the end of the rod rest. Put me uh, rod book back a touch. So I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos, but if you want to make micro adjustments on the rod tip in terms of tightening up to the feeder, you can just turn your spool gently rather than turning the handle. And dragging the feeder I think it is very very shallow this side and that's probably why we're not doing as well the water's very very colored as well it's like chocolate milk middle now and uh, this rod tips twitching away well you probably can't see it on the uh, the camera but the rod tip is literally twitching away little tiny little nudges so it's probably fish feeding on the feeder. Look at this though, like right under my rod tip, there's big plumes of silk coming up. So that'll be carp feeding right under the tip there in the margins. 
Right, well, we're pretty much out of that leftover ground bait. I'm just going to chuck the rest of it in, build that swim up a little bit. Uh, we're just going to use some of this ground bait that my dad's opened here. Uh, he got it from the tackle shop yesterday. So we'll probably just mix quarter or half a bag of this. If I don't need to use a full bag, I won't use a full bag. It's probably enough. Put a touch of water in. Don't go mad with it. Oh, that's Such more than enough. <laughs> there we go. That's actually perfect. So the ground bait will absorb that excess water. Like that. There we go, that's fine. I'm not going to bother putting it through the riddle, there's no point. Okay, I might even put some particles in it as well. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. No, no, just... yeah, let's put some particles in it. This is what I started the swim off. With at the start of the it. session, it's just like hemp, some maize, uh, some attractants. No, I've got some hemp. It's good and stuff. stuff. So I'll just mix that through, and it'll just give a little bit more particles for the fish to uh, hone in on, and it'll just hold them in the swim a little bit longer. If there is fish there, might even attract the bigger fish in. Oh. Do rather than just using ground bait so we'll see how we get on with this see if we get a couple more carp So the fishing is really tough today, uh, my dad's still on three fish and I'm on two. It's gone really quiet, I've uh, just swapped back over to near this tree next to the aerator. I was getting loads of indications out over towards the other side, uh, but they must have been smaller fish because I was just getting little tweaks on the feeder. So I'm not sure whether they were small crucian or what small bream or something but we'll keep going keep trying just mix some more ground bait up so maybe that'll bring them on the feed down a touch I think it's a bit dry Come on fish, there's loads of bubbles coming up on this opposite side to me, quite close in, probably 6 to 12 foot out from the bank on the opposite side, but all the way around. We've probably, we've probably come on the like proper shallow side haven't we? <laughs> That's, that's the problem when you're fishing a new fishery, you haven't got a clue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, two or three trips just to get, um, get enough knowledge to know where to fish. I think if I come again I would probably fish down that other side, because there seems to be more activity. I'm getting, I'm getting loads of indications on the tip here though. 
I think the only other place I can try is down this opposite margin. Across from them reeds. But we'll give it another 10-15 minutes down here. And then uh, I think I'll try over there. Down that opposite margin. Soon as I don't think there's anybody else going to be coming today anyway. So I think we'll be safe. Let's, uh, fingers crossed, we can get a few more. That'll be a really boring video. Keep plugging away at it. You can see all the plumes of silk coming up. Right under the rod tip. There's quite a lot of roots coming out from this embankment as well, so... Can't really fish that with a feeder. Kind of wondering if it's the same on the other side. Leave me rod a second. Yeah, it's, just, it's the same down here as well, because, so I might see if I can flick it over to them, to this bush. Where all the reeds are uh, sitting in the water. Because I've no doubt in my mind there'll be carp under there, so. Let's give it another little bit of time down here, under the, uh, under the tree. There we go. Oh, that's a better fish. Oh. I'm gonna have to turn you off. It's a GoPro back on my head. Oh, I was faffing about with the camera and everything. I thought I was gonna lose him in these uh, roots. Not a bad fish. I think if it was any bigger, I would have lost it. Uh, get around here and get it netted. Oh, he's swimming to the net. Perfect. Oh. Yes! The equaliser. <laughs> It's not a bad fish that dad actually. <laughs> oh no, it's over five pound that. Definitely. No. Just hooked, like literally. Just hooked. It's a long fish. They're very light, aren't they? Yeah, I think they can. Because of how silty it is. Yeah, I think the, I think the clearer the water, the darker they go. You're right. Definitely over five pound. Big paddle tail. Yeah. Good old aerator. Let's put it back in another swim. Yes. The shows you should keep plugging away. Don't give up. Down here this time. Have to put a new off drum. Just come away from the aerator. 
and I'm trying where I said I was going to try over here next to this bush really close in so I've just checked the depth and it's about a foot and a half two foot deep so it's no wonder I can see the fish cruising really shallow but I mean if you look at the water level and where the pegs are water level's probably down a foot and a half at least so when it's full it's probably probably about three foot deep on this side so I bet the fish are in the deeper water which is probably out towards the middle or at least it usually is in these kind of fisheries tend to make them like a bit like a bowl finally let's see what these fish have been this one's hooked fairly well it's a tench Well, that puts me in the lead, Dad. I don't know whether it's been tench that have been messing about with the bait or what, but they're normally pretty good takes with tench, aren't they? Yeah. There we go. A bit raggy, this tench, and deformed. <laughs> I'll get back. Well, I've just cast. I've just cast a bit further out. I've gone towards the middle of the lake. So if the fish goes left or right, I've had it, to be quite honest. I'm right through in between the island and that tree there on the other side. So if the fish uh, takes off all the way left or all the way right, I think I've, uh, I think I've lost it. But I'm already getting indications closer to the middle, it's probably a lot deeper. And there's fish there's fish blowing and the water's boiling out there, so there's definitely some feeding going on. And again guys, I've just managed to bully it through that uh, gap and close to my peg. And now it's just whizzing up and down this margin. So at least we didn't lose it, it's stirring up the bottom though. It's like another mirror. Not caught a common today, so it must be well stocked with mirror carp. This fishery, it's definitely near uh, ready for netting. I've been playing it a couple of minutes now. You're falling behind, Dad. Oh, let's took the bait band off. Oh. Bait band, so I'll have to replace that now. It's literally just a hook. So let's go back to the... Let's go back to a bigger one. With a bigger wafter. Try one of these with a bait screw. Let's try an eight mil chocolate orange this time. A little bit tricky to get them on these. It's 
sometimes easier if you push the uh, bait screw against your nail. There we go. That's better. Where was that one? Just out there where that swirl is, I think. Well, the temperature started to pick up massively, guys, so um, I've decided to take my winter suit off, so you'll have to excuse the uh, <laughs> wellies and shorts look. Uh, but we're in again. It's another car. It looks like an F1 this time. Oh, there are F1s in here. Out like. Well, we were just going to call it a day, and we said we were going to have one last cast. So I'll just cast under this tree for the last time, see if I can get one extra fish. And uh, looks like my dad's got one. I'm still winning, uh, but he's uh, looks like an was it an F1? Looks like he's got an F1. Well, folks, I'm going to call it a day there, and I'm going to get packed up. Thanks for joining us on this session. It's always nice when you're fishing a new fishery. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.